Defense Updates has reached more than 150,000 subscribers. We're genuinely thankful to our viewers. You keep us going. We don't dilute your video watching experience in this channel with sponsored products. If you like what we're doing, kindly support us on Patreon. www.patreon.com slash defense updates. Russian submarine activity is at its highest level since the Cold War, senior NATO officials have warned, in the latest sign of the alliance's concerns about Moscow's military assertiveness. Rear Admiral Andrew Lennon, NATO Supreme Forces commander, said Russia has boosted its subsea fleet and widened the scope of its operations, including in the eastern Mediterranean and around vital transatlantic communications cables. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes the increased Russian submarine activities and its implications. Let's get started. Number 5 Admiral Lenin's comments reflect the lingering suspicion between the Alliance and Moscow since Russia occupied Crimea in 2014. NATO responded to the occupation by bolstering its forces in the Baltic states and Moscow has accused the Brussels-based alliance of attempting to encircle and threaten Russia, including by the deployment of missile defense facilities. Admiral Lenin said the rise in submarine operations highlighted Russia's broader, strong investment to revive maritime capabilities that withered after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Russian submarine activity is higher now in the last three years than it has been since the Cold War, he said. What we have observed over the past three years are more deployments annually of Russian submarines away from their local waters than we have observed in the prior decade. He said NATO had seen a lot of activity from six new Russian Kilo-class diesel-electric submarines in the Black Sea and Mediterranean, where Moscow has developed an important strategic foothold in the naval base at Tartus on Syria's coast. Number four. Russia was also clearly taking an interest in NATO nations undersea infrastructure, notably data links between the US and Europe, Admiral Lenin added. He said the Russian undersea operations near cable routes included a vessel converted from a sub that fired ballistic missiles that he described as a mothership from which smaller auxiliary research subs could be dispatched. We believe they may be equipped to manipulate objects on the sea floor, he said although he did not allege any such interference had occurred. So that's clearly a concern because our nations rely so much on the internet and communications. The apparent Russian focus on the cables, which provides internet and other communications connections to North America and Europe, could give the Kremlin the power to sever or tap into vital data lines. Britain's top military commander also warned that Russia could imperil the cables that form the backbone of the modern global economy. The privately owned lines laid along the some of the same corridors as the first transatlantic telegraph wire in 1858 carry nearly all the communications on the internet, facilitating trillions of dollars of daily trade. If severed, they could snarl the web. If tapped, they could give Russia a valuable picture of the tide of the world's internet traffic. NATO strategists say undersea maneuvers can be effective asymmetric operations because they tie up alliance submarines surface ships and spotter aircraft used to track them. Undersea monitoring has also become more difficult as modern submarines are quieter and the ocean noisier because of increased commercial shipping," Admiral Lennon added. Number three. Alexander Grushko, Russia's ambassador to NATO, last week accused the alliance of forcing Russia unwittingly into a kind of military competition in the center of Europe. This is not our choice, we see the future of security in Europe in a different way," Mr. Grusho said in a radio interview. We are convinced that the real security can only be strengthened through collective efforts. The new phase of a deadly old Cold War game appears to be panning out after a Syrian jet fighter was shot down by the USS George H.W. Bush's F.A. 18 aircraft on June 18th. Moscow threatened to shoot down U.S. fighter aircraft in retaliation. Number 2 Russia has worked to enhance its naval capabilities since 2000. The Russian Kilo-class submarine is nothing new. It's been around in some form or another since the 1980s, but the latest six submarines of this class 
represents a significant evolution. It must be noted that one of those submarines, Krasnodar, was dubbed as Black Hole by some analysts. Out of the blue on May 29th last year, a series of cruise missiles tore through the air towards targets around Syria's besieged city of Palmyra. They were Russian missiles and they came from the Krasnodar which remained undetected before the missile launch. The Russians are also building two other new designs. Both are nuclear powered. The Borai class are Russia's new generation of ballistic missile submarines, the cornerstone and most survivable part of its nuclear arsenal. The Hunter class called the Yasin is intended to destroy US aircraft carriers. And the Wall Street Journal speculates one of these, the Kazan, may have secretly shadowed the USS George H.W. Bush and Britain's newest aircraft carrier, HMS Queen Elizabeth, during August 2017 exercises in the North Atlantic. Number 1 NATO member countries, including the UK, Norway, and Canada, plan to bolster their ability to track Russia's submarines by buying equipment including maritime patrol aircraft, helicopters, and frigates. The 29-member alliance also plans to set up a new North Atlantic Command to deter submarine activity and ensure safe passage of convoys of military reinforcements from North America to Europe. The focus on submarines reflects wider efforts by NATO member states to publicize alleged Russian aggression. From misinformation campaigns and cyber attacks to incursions by Russian jets in the airspace of NATO allies. Air Chief Marshal Sir Stuart Speech, the UK's Chief of the Defence Staff and the Chairman of NATO's Military Committee from April last week alleged that Russia posed a growing threat to undersea internet and telecommunications infrastructure. Malcolm Chalmers, an analyst at the Royal United Services Institute think tank, said NATO chiefs also had a duty to make political leaders aware of heightened Russia activity. The Russian defense budget has increased significantly since 2008 and as part of that they've spent a lot more money on increasing training exercises. They're simply getting out there more and that means NATO states have to track them. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.